In this video, we'll collect a few miscellaneous results involving convergence and divergence. We'll start with a little shorthand. Often, we don't really care where the series starts. We've got an infinite sum, and that's the important thing. And whether it starts at n equals zero, or n equals one, or n equals 20, is really neither here nor there. So if you just see the sigma notation, nothing below, nothing above, that's our shorthand for an infinite sum. Our first result is as follows. Suppose you have two convergent infinite series, and you build a third infinite series out of them using addition or subtraction. Then this third infinite series converges, and it converges to the natural thing. This is intuitive. It says, suppose we have an infinite series that looks like this. And these A's taken together give me capital A. And these B's taken together give me capital B. Then since we're adding everything together and the A's give me A and the B's give me B taken together, this gives us A plus B. So it is intuitive. Having said that, we've seen Grandy's theorem. You should be wary of trying to apply your intuition to infinite sums. However, our intuition does serve us correctly in this particular case. Likewise, the next theorem, we can pull constants out of a finite sums. So if we had a finite number of A's, we could certainly pull a K out of that finite sum. This theorem says we can pull constants out of infinite series as well. A corollary of that last theorem is that if you have a convergent series and you multiply the terms by some constant k, the resulting series still converges. And the converse of this is true. Just like taking a convergent series and multiplying it by k won't to stop it from being convergent, taking a divergent series and multiplying it by k won't stop it from diverging. This theorem has only the trivial example except 
perception that if you multiply a divergent series by zero, if you take all the terms, multiply them by zero, well, that new series is just zero. But any other k, we cannot to make a divergent series convergent in this way. Let's end with a very important result that the first finitely many terms of a series do not affect whether the series converges or diverges. Formalizing that a little, suppose that some series converges or diverges, then you can change finitely many terms, you can delete finitely many terms, you can add finitely many new terms, none of those actions will change whether the series converges or diverges. And we'll see soon enough how this can be used. But looking a little ahead, we're going to learn these tests that are supposed to tell us whether a series converges or diverges. And these tests have various requirements if we're going to use them. For example, several tests require that all of the terms of the series be a positive. So suppose we need all of the terms of the series to be positive, but we have the following series. What this theorem tells us is that we can delete finitely many terms without changing the convergence or divergence. So as long as these are the only negative numbers, we can just scratch them out. And that won't change whether the series converges or not. 